Hey gang, I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything you can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. P-N. Terms and conditions apply. Entrepreneurs Enigma is a podcast for the ups and downs of entrepreneurship. So the wins and the fails that we all face being entrepreneurs and how we learn from adversity. Every week I talk to a different entrepreneur with a story to tell. I'm Seth Goldstein. Come with me on the journey. This is Entrepreneurs Enigma. Let's get started. Hey everyone, welcome to another edition of the Entrepreneurs Enigma podcast. I'm Seth. You already know this by now. It's been a year, so not a surprise. It's still May. But I'm here with a good buddy of mine, Jason Carpero of Get Hover. I've known Jason, I don't know, what, seven years now. I've seen so many different, different renditions of this product of sorts. You know, it, it's evolved and it, it really goes to show how startups need to pivot. And Jason pivoted and pivoted right, and he's rocking it right now. So, hey, Jason, how's it going, buddy? Going very good. How are you today? Pretty good. And you, you've been an entrepreneur for your whole life. I mean, you went to Babson for crying out loud and studied the whole art of the whole dark art of entrepreneurship. You kind of knew this going in, right? Yeah, you know. Well, I always say that, um, uh, you know, getting a uh, getting a bachelor's degree in business, you learn how a business would work. Mm-hmm. Then you go get a job if, and you learn how that specific business works. Going to Babson really taught me how the world works, how, how everything is connected and uh, dependent on one another. And you push here, you see something pop out here. And um, so, yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's been definitely a journey. I'm um, sure. So you were on, so before you even came to the East Coast, you were out in San Diego. You met your amazing wife, who's the better half. Definitely. And um, you, what I remember, because I've heard this story a bunch of times, but you you were on a nonprofit board, you ran nonprofits, you also ran Sonic drive, drive-throughs. Drive you know, isn't that, wasn't that, if I remember this correctly? Yeah, yeah. So when I, actually, I graduated with a two-year degree from uh, Bruin Community College in upstate New York. Okay. And New York. New York. When I, yeah. when I, it's not as like in New York. <laughs> New yeah. York. And I got into Coastal Carolina University. Okay. Uh, that's where I was going to go for a four-year degree. But I couldn't afford the tuition. So I got my oh. package in the mail, and it said, this is not. Big price tag. <laughs> yeah, they said, you know, hey, you have a pretty big gap here. So my best option at that point in time was to go down to South Carolina and work mm-hmm. uh, and get in-state tuition. So I worked for a year, right. get in-state tuition. And so that's what I did. I had an opportunity uh, to work at Sonic Drive-In, eight bucks wow. an hour, flipping burgers. And yeah, I'd call home and my friends would be like, what's up, fry fella, burger boy. And, you know, but, but I didn't know anyone down there. So yeah. I moved into a 300 square foot apartment. My bed oh, wow. pulled out of the wall, didn't have a TV, didn't have a radio. I walked to work and I worked eight hours a day, clocked out, worked four hours for free. When I went home, I just took the operations manual home. And within three months, I was the only person in these drive-ins that knew how to take apart every piece of equipment, how to put it back together, how to clean them. And so very quickly, within eight months of being down there at 20 years old, worked my way to assistant general manager. Whoa. It's not yeah. assistant manager, yeah. assistant general manager. That's pretty wild. Yeah. Yeah. And then into ownership. And by the time I was 21 years old, I'd worked my way up into uh, building my very first store 
uh, from the ground up with an architect, and I never went to Coastal Carolina University. Yeah. So what's so, so what brought you to Babson? I mean, like, because Babson's in what? Where's Babson? Is that Massachusetts? Yep, just outside of Boston. Uh, Boston. Well, I, so I left the fast food. I went out to San Diego. My brother was there, and I was working there for about six, seven years uh, in a nonprofit. And we we were actually what's referred to as a social enterprise. So we believe that the greatest uh, social service is a job. So we employed inner city kids out at stadiums awesome. doing uh, vending and concessions work. And at that point in time, I went back to school at night, got my bachelor's degree and was, you know, being appointed to as a commissioner in the uh, city of San Diego by the mayor. Insured, wild. Yeah, yeah. Equal How opportunity commission. Uh, at the time I was probably 25, 26. That's uh, but I was to be a commissioner at 25. It was. Yeah. Hundreds of millions of dollars in contracts. It was the Equal Opportunity Commission ensuring that women and minorities and disabled vets had equal access to these contracts. And it wasn't just the good old boys club always getting the same contracts. And so we, we had oversight and made sure that they were meeting diversity numbers and not just for diversity's sake, but like, let's, let's match the makeup of the, awesome. of the city here. So at that point in time, the CEO of the company I was working with, uh, Juma Ventures, he was a great friend and mentor, Dr. Mark Spencer. And I knew there was nothing I could do to ever take this guy's job. I was on the executive management team and I'm like, he's so great. I said, at that point in time, I started to realize that there's some things in this world I don't know. And, mm -hmm. and at the time, the, the chairwoman of Juma Ventures, uh, Jenny Flores from uh, Citibank in, in San wow. Francisco, yeah. she was getting her MBA from Babson. And I had never heard of Babson up until that point. So she pointed me in the direction of Babson. I looked at it. I toured the school and I fell in love. I, oh. I toured a lot of other schools. I applied to a lot of other gorgeous schools. Gorgeous campus, but... too. It's also a gorgeous campus. Electric. We're going to take a quick break here from our sponsors and get right back to the show. Hey, gang. I got an offer for you today from LinkedIn. As business-to-business -business marketers, your needs are unique. B2B buying cycles are long, and your customers face incredibly complex decisions. Isn't it time you had a marketing platform built specifically for you? LinkedIn ads empower marketers with solutions for you and your customers. LinkedIn ads allow you to build the right relationships, drive results, and reach your customers in a respectful environment. On LinkedIn, you have direct access to build relationships with decision makers. Of the 875 million users on the network, 180 million are senior level executives, 10 million are C-level executives. You will also be able to drive results with targeting and measuring with their tools built specifically for B2B. And best of all, they work. Audiences exposed to brand messages on LinkedIn are six times more likely to convert. LinkedIn ads also rank number one for security, community, and ad experience as part of the Business Insider's Digital Trust Study. Make B2B marketing everything it can be and get $100 credit. It's $100 credit on your next campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash MPN to claim your credit. It's linkedin.com slash MPN. PN. Terms and conditions apply. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Neville Hobson and Shell Holtz are the legendary hosts of FIR4, Immediate Release, a great podcast. Shell, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. Well, Jason, Neville and I have been producing FIR since January of 2005. It's the very first PR communications podcast ever. We analyze current news and trends from a communication perspective with a short episode or two each week and a longer, more in-depth show every month. Awesome. Where can people subscribe? Well, they can go to FIRpodcastnetwork.com. They can find the show, of course, at marketingpodcast.net or search for immediate release wherever you get your podcasts. You heard him, folks. Go subscribe. You talk to someone there. It's not like, where are you going to party? What are you doing here? It's like, what are you starting? What are you working on? What's your hustle? The energy, it was just electric. And I found myself wanting to go no other place than Babson. That's awesome. So then you, then you moved to Boston, I assume, right? Or did you do it online? Uh, no, I, yeah, I moved, I moved right on campus. I said, hey, I'm, I'm doing this one-year accelerated MBA program. Oh, wow. Why accelerated? Jeez. Yeah. And so I, I just wanted to be there. I wanted to marinate in, in all of the information. And when I showed up, you know, people had gone to Dartmouth and Harvard and, you know, mm -hmm. I'm MIT undergrad. And, because I had done the community college and then a bunch of work and deferred, and then I went back to school in San Diego online, I was like, this is my one shot. I want to see, you know, if, if, uh, if I can hold my own with these other students and ended up winning the Roger Babson Award, the coveted award, the number one award given out uh, that was a Sorensen Scholar. 
And so wow. when I showed up, I'm like, you not that I said it's a competition, but I was like, I'm here to learn. I'm here to soak it up. Uh, that's, that's what I'm doing here. And I feel like I got the best out of the education. And so they gave me, uh, those awards, a $30,000 scholarship to go. So I'm, wow. I'm uh, forever grateful. And so I currently serve as president of the, uh, Philadelphia chapter of the Babson alumni association to try to give back, uh, in any yeah, way I can. Absolutely. That's fantastic. And so then that enter contact, you had a friend, um, who was starting up this business card, online business card kind of thing. I met you then through the comments on technically Philly thing. Cause I was, yeah, I was at that point I was in digital marketing. I'm like, I wanted a digital business card. And I'm like, and you were coming up to Doylestown for, for better, or for worse, for me with some people. And we met and we hit it off. We did some work together for a while. And then we just did hard and fast friends. And so let's talk about that a little bit. So, yes. yeah. So, uh, you know, while I was at Babson, <clears throat> I met a great student, uh, a good friend of mine, Kip Taylor, and he showed me on a phone. He said, download this app. You know, it's in beta. And he, he was running the company, he thought of it. He built it. He, he had outsourced the technology. And what I saw was he sent me his contact information and socials in through the air. Right. And so wild, his yeah. contact info showed up on my phone and I was like, this is the wave of the future. Like this is. I could see college students. I could see uh, business people all using this. So uh, I was the first investor in content, wow. actually. So I took out a loan from school because they'd given me the, the uh, scholarship. So I took out a loan for $20,000 at 5% interest and didn't use it for school. I put it directly into the business, uh, became the CEO of Contact Kip, and I partnered. And we were off to the races. And we raised uh, about $275,000 for that right before we left school. Wow. Yeah. That's what we call hustle. That's what we call a good hustle. Mm -hmm. you, know, you know, and still then, paying that off, by the way. Oh, I'm sure. Oh, I'm <laughs> sure. I'm sure. Yeah, absolutely. And so then, so then, and to the, so you've been doing it. You did that for a while. We met. I helped you out here and there. You know, we've been friends. And then I remember during the pandemic, where we got on Zoom, we accept. I have an idea. Like, you could see this big goofy grin on his face, like, the goofiest grin you possibly think. Like, he, Jason had this idea of hover and it was incredible what, what he came up with. And this is the ultimate freaking pivot. Let's talk about that. Yeah. Well, when, when the pandemic hit, I was holding an in-person event app that was used for networking and Oops. there were no events. Right. So we had to, uh, we had to decide like, what do we do? Do we, uh, you probably heard, um, in, in kind of adverse conditions, there's, there's quitters, there's campers and there's climbers. And we said, okay, do we quit? Do we, which really didn't seem like an option because I had yeah. a lot of money in it, a lot of time in it. Yeah. Uh, do we, do we camp? Do we just wait this out and then we'll have our, our really good networking app for when things come back or, or do we climb and pivot in a different direction? And so what we ended up trying to do was support the customers we had through the pandemic with a virtual offering. Yeah. And uh, I will tell you that that was a nightmare. That was it was following people into an industry where there were already incumbents, there were yeah. already you know the the major eight hundred pound gorillas there, and and so but we tried and we you tried did. and we tried and we tried and we just could never get there. And then we had uh, two conversations in one day where two different people asked us, "Hey, you know, I really love your networking. Could I use this portably? Could I?" Could I go to a website, let's oh, say for hop in or run the world or something, and I want to use your networking. Your networking is the best because we didn't just approach virtual events uh, with the old, okay, we're going to set up a room and stuff. We, we uh, approached it from a networker's perspective yeah, absolutely. because that's where we came from. That was our history. And yeah, so we, we thought, okay, this is interesting. If two people are on the same site at the same time, you could technically expose the front end of web traffic and let them network with each other no matter which url they're on it's so wild and if, if people want to see it you can actually go to goldsteamu.com it's on i have hover on there and it is so much fun well that that was the that was the idea so we got excited about that and then mm -hmm. we we instantly said okay well if we could show you the the front end of the web traffic then that means that people could network on websites and so we said any website you go on, you can actually talk to other site visitors. And so we took this to Fortune 500 companies and we said, hey, we think you have this problem. Do you have this problem? And they said, no, we don't have that problem at all. 
<laughs> we don't no. want our site visitors talking to each other. And that was kind of uh, a wake up call. So we, yeah. we, we had uh, some people asking for that and some people not, but, but because we had the ear of CMOs and executive vice presidents of marketing companies, we said, well, what problems are you having? And they're like, well, you know, Google just pulled, pulled third party cookies yeah. and um, are pulling. We're, are pulling. Yeah. And we're finding it harder to track and target these users. We don't know who's on the website. We don't know what they're doing to some degree. We've got all this content that's just dying. The moment we, we, we push it out, it just dies. And so life, we yeah. ended up talking to these people and finding out that there was this huge disconnect between uh, when you go to a website, uh, you have questions that flood the mind. Am I getting the best price? Can I put this thing together? Um, just a plethora of things that, that you're wondering. What do the reviews say? Um, is this quality? Are my kids going to ruin this? And, and, and if you could get answers to those questions mm -hmm. while you're still on the site, you're less likely to go over to YouTube, go over to Amazon, go over to Reddit and, and, and never come back. And so what we ended up pitching and building was, and this is so far away from a networking app used at <laughs> so events. Talk now, about now we're, yeah. we're in the marketing technology space and we deliver uh, high-performing, personalized, relevant brand content directly to site visitors while they're on the site when they need it most, when they're there on the site thinking about buying our, your product or service. It's fantastic. It, 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 it's mind-blowing. I remember when Jason told me about it, I started smiling goofy. And I'm like, dude, you're on to something. Go, 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 go. Well, it's the difference between conjuring up an idea by yourself in a silo and trying to bring it to market and having it yeah. be rejected versus going to customers and mm -hmm. saying, do you have this problem? No. What problems do you have? What can we solve for you? And the moment we started aligning ourselves with the customer, solving mm -hmm. a key problem. Well, Absolutely. it seems like it's a problem, but is it a really pressing problem? How much would you pay to solve this problem? Yeah. We were going to solve it this way. Is that how you want it solved? And so just um, it's, it's, no, it's no kudos to us. Uh, we didn't, we did, we were not magicians. We're not like the smartest people in the world. We listened to the customers. We kept them along the journey the whole time. You know, Hey, this is how we're going to solve it. Can you give us a, a, can you get a look at this demo, this prototype? Mm -hmm. You know, what do you think about this? And so what we did there was just mitigate the risk of uh, being rejected when we actually yeah. came to market. It's great. So Jason, you've been an entrepreneur majority of your life. And so what is the best thing about being an entrepreneur? I think the the best thing for me about being an entrepreneur is on the event invention and creation side. So we have uh, we have two patents on the business, and the second patent actually covers three inventions. So the ability to just think something up uh, in your head, talk about it with your friends, and talk about it with your team, and then build it and patent it. And then see thousands and millions of people potentially, hopefully, is, is where we're going, uh, yeah. engaging with it and liking it. And so it's, to me, I just love the idea of creating something where there previously was nothing and having people hopefully accept something that you thought of, you dreamt it up, you had an idea and you, and you actually can now hold it in your hands and, and use it. That's really cool. So it keeps you up at night, though, with entrepreneurship. I mean, there's always something that keeps the, the entrepreneur up at night. Uh, I think on the say the same thing of, of creating it, the, the yeah. thing that keeps me up at night is just obsessing over people's experience, the customer's experience. Are they going to like it? Uh, what do they think of it? How can we make it better? Uh, we're constantly soliciting feedback from people. Mm -hmm. And even when we demo to people, their questions, can it do this? Or, well, okay, so it does this, right? I'm like, no, but do you want it to do that? <laughs> um, <laughs> so that, that's the biggest thing is just customer adoption. Um, we're, we're in this to solve problems and to make people's lives easier and save them time and save them money, make them money. And if we're not doing that, then they don't need what we have. So just, just trying to hit the mark every single day and work super hard so that those people see the value in what we're doing. That's fantastic. And so what is the most important thing to carry with you all the time? Um, I don't think it's any one thing. I, I think it's a combination car carrying with you, uh, a belief there, there's so many times people, my mom, you know, honey, do you think it's time to give up on this? Family members, um, friends, you know, Hey, when's enough enough? You've got to, Elon Musk said it best, you know, to be an entrepreneur, you've just got to be able to put up with 
an unbelievable amount of pain and suffering for a very long time. And then all of a sudden it clicks. And for the longest time, we thought we were doing the right thing. We're working hard. So carrying with you that confidence that what you're doing will actually pan out, a belief and a faith that God didn't bring you this far just to bring you this far, mm-hmm. that, that in fact, there is a reason for this. And I always said like, hey, even if we went, even if we went bankrupt, belly up, didn't work out, um, couldn't return a capital to our investors, which we now have about 25 investors, you know, it's been really fun. And we were building something we thought was useful and we were learning a ton. Keep in yeah. mind, I was a fast food guy and a nonprofit guy who just went into <laughs> tech. And, and so I've just learned so much and I've been able to forge uh, wonderful relationships with a lot of really hardworking people. Uh, the, the talented team at Hover just inspire me every single day. So carrying, carrying with me that, that faith and that belief that things will pan out. But you just can't have the faith and have the belief that it's going to work out. You've got to complement that every single day with an ungodly amount of work, just working your tail Absolutely. off. You know, hustle, hustle, hustle in a mm-hmm. logical way. So Jason, where can people find you online? Obviously, gethover.com. But where else? Where do, where's your watering hole online? I, I am accessible on uh, LinkedIn and Instagram as well. Hit me up to search for me, Jason Cropero on LinkedIn. Same thing on Instagram. There's, there's no duplicates. There's no copies of me. So you'll get, you'll get. No, there's only one of you. There's definitely uh, there's only one Jason. <laughs> Appreciate it. But yeah, just check it out at uh, gethover.com. If you have content or there's content out there that can support your web initiatives, uh, it's one snippet of code that lives on the website and it'll deliver the right piece of content to the right site visitor at the right time in their journey. It's wild. I absolutely love it. So thanks, Appreciate Jason. That. Thanks for being on the show. And we'll see everyone next week. Thanks, Seth. That was a great show. Hey, if you're enjoying Entrepreneurs Enigma, please give us a review on the podcast trusted of your choice. We're on all of them. And these reviews really help others find the show. Also, if you're getting value from the show and want to buy me a coffee, Go to the show notes and click on the link to help me stay awake while I bring you more great episodes to your ears. That's in the show notes, and I look forward to the next episode. Take care, guys. Media hopes you have enjoyed this episode. This podcast is one of the many great shows on the MPN Marketing Podcast Network. You may know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Lacey Boggs hosts and produces a great podcast called A Stone Marketing Detective little bit different than your normal podcast on MPN. Lacey, tell us what these fine folks will get when they listen. Ace Stone Marketing Detective is a fully scripted and produced fictional radio play that follows crack marketing detective Ace Stone as she bamboozles the bad guys and detects dastardly deeds in the marketing industry. The podcast is a funny tongue-in-cheek look at content marketing, shady marketers, and suspicious marketing techniques online. And I think it's a fun new way to have a business podcast that improves that marketing can be playful and effective. Where can people subscribe to this thing? You can go to acemarketingdetective.com or find it in your favorite podcast player or go to the Marketing Podcast Network. You heard her. Go subscribe. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketingpodcasts.net.